Hello there, so uh, good morning. So today we're gonna talk about this LED grow light DIY that I built. So um, it was pretty simple. I didn't go with a build video just because it was pretty simple, but let's go over the major players here. So we have, starting off is the Mean Mill HLG 60H C700A driver. So 700, uh, 70 watt, 700 milliamp. Uh, I think it runs like 400. It's adjustable here with this pot. Uh, you pull the little plug off and then you can adjust the uh, potentiometer in there and uh, So it'll do 400 to 700 milliamps or so and um, Next up we have this big heat sink here uh, It is a heat sink USA 5.88 inch wide So six inches wide 36 inch long it's a big beefy one for sure and I initially had fans bought but I don't need fans on this just because it's so big and beefy and I'm running the LEDs really softly uh, while we're on the top here this is the kind of this is one inch angle I believe and there we go so these are drilled and tapped then these are M3 screws hex nuts I think they're eight millimeter with a nylock uh, nut at the back and then these ones would have nylock nuts at the back so uh, not the greatest metal working um, but it's very sturdy and on there really well these are quick links rapid links I think they're rated for 330 pounds and some climbing webbing to hang it so this light is actually will be a seed starting light for my mother-in-law so she lives out in the country starts a bunch of seeds uh, does a lot of gardening starts seeds late winter early spring and her uh, she's got like a t5 two foot fluorescent and she's not happy with it so okay so um let's look at the business end All right, so what we have is three CXB 3070s. So they're Cree LEDs. They're, 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 they're the good ones. Um, they are in 5K or 5000 Kelvin color. So a little more blue in there for, um, for vegetative growth, right? Um, they are in series, so what I have here is the uh, the output of the driver. So it's two wires, you know, positive, negative. Output of the driver comes through this hole. Uh, this has got heat shrink and some silicone. So uh, I thought about maybe a grommet, but I kind of wanted the silicone to lock the wire in so you can't pull it out from, you know, either end. So um, these are all in series, so we're running about 100 volts because they're 36 volt chips or so I'm running them softly at 700 milliamps um, They're good for a bit more than that and they're actually good for if you keep them cool They're good for 11,000 lumens. I believe so 10 to 11,000 lumens at 700 milliamps um, Which is kind of what I Planned this build out and that's about half of the lumens that it does so roughly 5,000 lumens per lamp right so um so that's that plenty of light uh so what we need to light up is she has a couple of uh seedling trays and they're you know we kind of figured it was about a three foot by two foot space and so this should do that pretty nicely all right so back to the top end of the light here um i did go ahead and and soldered the output of the driver to my wire. I'm using 20 gauge just because I'm, you know, at 700 milliamps. Um, 18 would be nice, but uh, I've got 20 gauge. And I'm using uh, capped on tape here, so it's high temp tape. If you keep it really clean, it, it's, um, it sticks pretty well, so, you know, it might, uh, I wonder how long, you know, how long it'll last, um, you know, over the years, but, um, and I didn't want to, to route it above in the fins. So that's what I did. Also, um, so what I did is drill and tapped these 
uh, cob holders. These are just the cheap cob, cob holders that come with the the chips. Um, and I can kind of see why people, you know, upgrade to the nicer ones, you know, like the solderless uh, cob holders. Um, but these are working okay. Uh, I use four, these are hex, you know, like button head hex nuts, um, not nuts, but hex bolts. They're four millimeter and I should have gone with six because the cob holders, six or eight even, um, the cob holders soak up about two millimeters. So there's not very many threads into, um, into the heat sink here. Um, but that's okay because what I did is I used some, um, double stick thermal tape to put it on there so even if the cob holder comes off uh the cob you know the, the chip isn't gonna come off so that's okay another thing about these cob holders is it exposed we have exposed um oops i just touched the cob there uh exposed um solder joints and so i covered that up with some liquid electrical tape so that was kind of a first for me uh only just because you know, depending on where you touch, it's 100 volts and that'll, that'll zap you. So, so we did that. Um, what else? And so it's an M3 screw and I tapped, I drilled and tapped. I used, um, for the tap, I actually used a little drill to tap. So you just kind of, just like you would normally manually. And it worked out swell. Um, a lot quicker and faster and easier. So, and I'm, so I'm new to tapping. So that's pretty, so that's that back to the stop side once more um so yeah I, I the output of the driver i went ahead and soldered i know you can get like a wago connector where you just plug in the wires and clip clip it down and so you that way you can connect and disconnect you know rapidly kind of like a quick release uh, situation and so you could throw your you know meter in there and measure current and things like that but i wanted this to be uh you know pretty permanent it's going to my mother-in-law and grandkids and whatnot so um the driver is a it's got a three wire three bare wires so you have to get a diy plug uh so this is a three hole plug-in so um so what this is, is you open this up unscrew it open it up and you figure out the uh, uh you know live neutral and ground and um that wasn't too hard. I'm a, I'm a low power DC guy. Uh, that wasn't too hard, so I just kind of triple checked, and it was kind of uh, you know had to contort the wires in here. And then once you get this cracked open, it has each one has a wire to clamp you know the three wires in. So so three screws to clamp each wire, and then you just clamp it closed like that. It's pretty pretty slick. Um, for switching, I actually have. This, I think it's a 10 foot extension. So we have um, some more outputs. So one there, so it looks like three total outputs. You can run more stuff um, on it, a fan or humidifier, heater, whatever. And so here's the switch. So that's just easier uh, rather than, you know, muddying up this with a switch. I just put the switch on this. Um, uh, so that's turned on. So there we go. Um, what else? So it runs about. Here's the meter. So it runs about 82 watts. So it's a 70 watt driver. Uh, that's all right. And usually about 0.68 or 0.7 milliamps uh, on the AC there at 121 volts. So when I measured it, when I built this, I measured it was about 775 milliamps or so. So a little more than 700, which is what I was going for. Uh, and I could turn that down a little bit, but I'm happy with 775. That's fine. So, all right, let's pick it up and get a look at the light. It's definitely really bright for what it is. So that should certainly light up a three by two for seed starting. So pretty bright. And so I, I've been testing this for the last couple of weeks on, let's turn that off. Make sure it's not sitting on that. Okay, we're good. Uh, so I've been testing this the last couple of weeks 
when my, my makeshift dog kennel grow. And I have a clip of that and where I'm doing some temperature testing. So pretty much I run, uh, you don't need, I don't need a fan because this is so massive. So I run about five degrees over ambient, five degrees Fahrenheit here. It's a little warmer here. So about 85 degrees or so here, um, when it's 67. So a little warmer there. This guy gets, once again, everything gets, gets warmed up. He's about a hundred and hundred degrees Fahrenheit. And then again, over here about, uh, you know, 70, 72 degrees. So I will cut to that clip and um, where I'm doing some temperature testing. It's kind of dark, the video, but there we go. Thanks for watching. Okay there, so we're doing some testing here. Um, this is my makeshift dog kennel grow. We've got some peppers in there. There's a red pepper there. And normally I've been using this garage light that I built. I have that on my channel, uh, a build series video. But anyway, here it is. It's been running for a couple of hours and it's hard to see the light. Let me turn the light on. All right, not much better, but we're just taking some temperature here. Um, so ambient is 67 degrees Fahrenheit and I'm getting 73 degrees there. 70, it gets hot in the middle, so that's 85, that's 82, 84, 85, so that's about 18, what is it, 18 degrees Fahrenheit, over, and then we have 68 there, so yeah, pretty cool with no, uh, with no fans.